Hello everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter and today we're here to look at a Hornby model and this isn't a, well, it isn't a new release because it's not just been released but it hasn't been out all that long. It came out, I think it came out either at the beginning of this year or sometime during the previous year, I can't remember. But this particular model has sold out quite quickly so it's not all that easy to get hold of. But we are looking at the Hornby Class 50, this particular one is one of the newer releases and this particular one is 5046 Ajax in the BR Blue large logo livery and this is the second class 50 I have because I have been meaning to get hold of a second class 50 for a while now as I'm sure you already know I already have a class 50 that particular one is 5013 Aging Court and now I've got this one to go with that one now I have had this model in my collection for a while now and I've only just got around to doing the review of this simply because I've simply not had the chance to do so. There have been other videos I've filmed before getting to this one that I wanted to give priority to to get uploaded onto the internet and also there have been other things outside of what I do on the internet being my personal commitments that are more important but we're finally getting around to the review of this model now. So first things first we're going to take off the box leaf which this is the typical Hornby star packaging, packaging of today, the plastic packaging and on the back of the box we have the brief history of the class 50. You can pause and read that if you want to. Then we take out the plastic packaging known to many as the ice packaging then we put the packaging down and we can look at the instruction manual and it's the usual stuff that we're all used to seeing really. interestingly though the instructions for this class 50 are the same ones that you get with the older one but there have been some changes since to this particular model as I'll talk to you about later but some have kept such as the working louvers or the grills I should say rather which is one feature they've actually kept because this is a newer release. Also it's DCC ready, we we'll talk about that, adding the accessories. Interestingly the show diagram of fitting snow players on but this model doesn't come with any, strangely enough. Also the body removal and the lubrication. We've all seen it before, nothing new. So I'll put the instructions to one side and now we can take off the plastic cover for the packaging or sleeve I should say rather, whichever you choose to call it and before we take the model out of the packaging we come to the little accessory bag now I know it's hard to see everything in this little bag but what we do get in here is the NEM couplings to fit to the model you don't have to fit these, you can fit others as well but these are the couplings that the model supplied with you also do get the vacuum pipes to stick on the model and also you get those you can't quite see them in this photo but they are in there you do get those little paper clip tools that you use to well we can use to open up the grills on the side of the loco however I don't really tend to bother doing that because it's quite fiddly to do so I just tend to leave the grills as they are but you can do that if you want to and now we just undo the box clip and then we just lift the model out of the packaging and we can then just put the packaging to one side and we are now free to have a look at the model in detail the clip to this box is not easy to get back on I will we'll be honest this is quite tricky to do Now the first thing I'm going to talk about, as I always do with these reviews, is the weight. And this model is very, very heavy, and that's what we want, because the weight is important because it provides the traction. Because without the traction, this model wouldn't be able to pull anything on your layout, so that is why the weight in these models are important. And it's also why you don't see traction ties very often. Although that said, there have been a few models that still have the traction tires such as the Wickham trolley car I don't own that model but I do know it has traction tyres 
But normally with most models that they bring out nowadays, they don't tend to have the traction tyres because the weight provides all the traction. Now we come on to the detail. So first of all we have oval sprung metal buffers. So if you like the sprung buffers, that will make you happy. But I don't have much care for them personally, but they're there anyway. Also we have screw link couplings separately fitted on both ends of this model. With the older models you had to stick them on separately, but with these newer release models they are already fitted, which is nice to do because it saves a bit of time and that can be quite fiddly to do. You can also see the holes there in the buffer beam for all the details to go into. We also have these footsteps on again both ends of the model which is a nice bit of detail to have and it's accurate like the class 50s in real life and we also have that jumper cable as you can just about see by the front buffer there that goes just under that footstep this particular detail, if you want to take the body off, I should point out that that little detail has to come out of the little hole it's fixed into, because otherwise you won't be able to get it off. And it's also quite clever that Hornby have done that, so that's actually a really nice touch as well to have on the model. Then we come on to the front of the Class 50, and this is one of the things I like about the Class 50. It's the front of the locomotive that gives it that expression of sorts. It's that little bit of detail under the front headlight there that <laughs> gives it a expression and that's really something quite interesting to see and it's not something that you tend to see with the modern traction that you get today but anyway so on the front of the loco you do get work working lights that you shall see later on in the video also you get that jumper cable at the front separately fitted you also have some warning signs there and lots of separately fitted handrails that are painted white which is a nice bit of detail to have we also have glazing in all the cab windows as well as separately fitted window wipers and also on the front head coat box the locomotive's running number 46 is actually printed on the head coat box, well on the one end it is, and that's a nice little feature to have. And I should point out this is something that the real class 50, this particular one, 50046 had, so it's nice that it's been carried over to the model. Also in the interior, in the cab, we have painted detail. You can see the seats painted and the controls and everything, and that is a really nice feature to have. And it really lifts the model and makes it more realistic and it adds to the detail as well. Also we have the black paint around the sides of the windows that also go around on the front windows as well before I forget. We also have a warning sign there printed by the door which we have glazing in the cab doors and separately fitted handrails and the door handles as well. And with the cab doors they do actually open and this is a feature that Hornby are still using on the majority of their super detailed diesel oh, no. locos and it's a nice little detail feature but one thing I do have to say about the opening doors is that you're only going to really mess about with them when you're holding the model but there we go there's also glazing in the side windows of the class 50 and then we come on to the bogey detail of the class 50 which we do have the axle boxes that are painted yellow which is a nice little feature to have they didn't need to be painted but they are you also have the cab footsteps as well as the springs and some of the piping on the bogies and it's all there like it should be. We also have some nice painted pipe work as well just by the fuel tanks. I don't know what this particular detail is for but it's there and it's nice. And we also have the two fuel tanks. This particular one doesn't have much detail on it but the other one as you can see has rivet detail on it and it looks really nice. We then come on to the grills of the class 50 which do have a nice textile finish to them and there are also a couple of warning signs as you can see by the grills and also we do have some rivets around them as well just like the real class 50s and a great feature to have on the model. And also we have the tops dialogue printed there of the class 50 just printed by one of the grills there. Again a nice bit of detail to have and for the record we might as well show the other cab end 
same detail as all the others. Separately fitted handrails, opening doors, warning sign there and glazing in the windows. We also can't leave out the BR Large logo, crisply printed on the sides of the body. And also we have that little fuel tank doll there, just under the Double Arrows logo, which is what it is. We then also have the crisply printed nameplates of the locomotive, and that little emblem atop of the nameplate. Now on the last Class 50 I have, these transfers, which is what they are, peeled off and had to get some extra ones to cover over them. Hopefully, this will not happen with this Class 50, being a new release. And we also have the locomotive's running number, crisply printed on the sides of the loco, 50046. And also you can see one of the modifications done to the Class 50 is where one of the side windows basically came blanked off and has that grill detail on. And we also have some more nice grills on the side of the loco, or in this case a grill. And we also have that nice fine orange warning stripe that goes around the locomotive which looks really nice. We then come on to the roof detail. Now this particular locomotive has a black roof. Some of the class 50s in this livery had black roofs, some of them had grey roofs. Hornby well, we have done class 50s in this livery in the past with grey roofs, so it's nice to see that Hornby have now released some with the black roofs, which adds to that bit of variety on the market. So moving on to the detail itself, as you can see we have the exhaust ports with some rivets around them. We also have some more rivets on the roof and this curious bit of detail, which I don't know what it is, but it's there and it looks nice. Then we have these details that I believe are called access hoods, which open up to the engine. They don't on the model, but they do in reality, but there are some nice rivet details there as well. And we also have a couple more access hoods and some more exhaust ports and more rivet detail, so there's plenty of that where that came from. And we can't forget the wire mesh grill with the fan underneath it and some rivets around that. Now, one change that has been done to this model is that in the past the fans rotated. Now, the mechanism it had was not very reliable. It had a belt that spun the fan. The only models I have in my collection that spin, well, the fans anyway, are the Class 31s. The other Class 50 I have and the Class 56, the fan mechanism has been quite unreliable. And it has been with other locomotives that have this feature. So what Hornby have done now is that the fans no longer spin. They are now just static. And that's a very nice little detail to have. And that's actually something that I like that Hornby have done that, that they've changed it so the fan doesn't spin. Because really, when you're running the model, you're not going to be very often looking at the fan spinning. You're going to be looking at... Well, just the locomotive running around the layout. You're not going to really pay too much attention to the spinning fan. You're going to be looking at the detail on the model on the sides and the livery and the locomotive itself. And also in the particular model railway videos that I do, you're never going to see the fan spinning anyway. But it's still a nice bit of detail to have the fan there and painted as well. So regardless, I like the fact that it doesn't spin anymore. Then we come on to the other end of the Class 50 again, we have the working lights there and the jumper cables and the separately fitted lamp irons, something I very nearly forgot actually. <laughs> the separately fitted handrails and the warning signs and the window wipers and the head cow box which this end, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't have the loco ring number printed in the head cow box, that's only on the one side, or one end I should say rather. And the livery application, I think it's spot on. The livery is correct, the painting finishes just what we want to, although early in this video you might have noticed when I talk about the orange stripe going around the cab, or the top of the loco, around the cabs I should say rather, is that there was actually a bit of a, a slight paint defect there, but you know, to be honest, you're never going to really notice it anyway. Only when you get real close up to it then you're going to notice it, but you know, standing from a certain distance away and often when you're just going to be noticing the loco running around the track you're not going to really notice it anyway, you're going to forget it's there almost if it wasn't there in the first place but you know, it's not really that much of a major issue but other than that, the rest of the livery application it's spot on there's no, there's no major marks on there that's going to pop out at you which is what we don't want to see 
Now the other side of the class 50 is pretty much more or less the same, but one thing that is different is the grills on the side, which are these two here. Some of the, you see in the class 50s in reality, the grills on the sides of the logo are different on each side. And so I like that Hornby have obviously done this on the model because it's making it more realistic. And before I forget, on the other end of the logo we have the sprung metal buffers, just like on the other end of the class 50 was. We now come on to the running performance of the class 50, and as you can see, this model ran smoothly and faultlessly around the layouts. And this is what we expect. We shouldn't expect any motors burning out, no stuttering or jerky movement, or no kinds of faults whatsoever. It should be nice and smooth as you can see in this video. You can also see the working lights there, which it's mainly the middle headlight as well as the two smaller headlights when it's reversed that light up. And also the lights in the headco box light up as well. But in the case with the lights in the headco box, they're more clear to see when the lights are turned off. Now we come on to the pedestrian for class 50. As you can see, the blur mode took us coupled up to the rank of the R blue and grey stock, and it had no problems with pulling this stock whatsoever. And seeing this class 50 paired up with these coaches, it's a very 70s, 80s era sort of train, being round on the layout. So overall, I can't really seem to pick a fault with the Hornby Class 50, although one thing I should say is that the inside bits on the side cab windows are not painted black, they're left yellow. But it's only a small thing and this is something you can rectify yourself if you wish. But other than that, the Class 50 itself on Hornby is a stunning model and I think every layout should have one because they are really worth getting. And who doesn't love the Class 50? I do, they are one of my favourite diesel locos and so if you love them you've got to get one. So overall I rate the Hornby Class 50 a 10 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the Hornby Class 50 and I'll see you again soon for the next video. But until then, take care.